Hey guys, it's Josh, the Not Any Know It All, coming to you today to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the impact and the fallout of what happened on Thursday. Uh, there's some information coming out. I'm actually recording this Friday afternoon, so more NCAA information may come out later this afternoon, tomorrow morning, and it won't be included in this video, but I'm sure I'll, I'll talk about it on Twitter or something else like that. So uh, obviously right now we have NCAA has canceled all College World Series and Women's College World Series for softball. Uh, a lot of the leagues have canceled altogether. I know you have the Ivy League and a number of others who have shut down for the entire season. SEC has not shut down for the entire season. They have set it to where they still might restart, I think like on April 16th, but teams are not allowed to practice until that day, which means games wouldn't be able to start right away either. I kind of find that one interesting. It seems like they're just uh, waiting for all the individual schools to cancel. And then once enough of them cancel, say, oh, well, we need to cancel um, this season as well. So I think that's what's going to end up happening with the SEC. So I think in the end, we're not going to have uh, NCAA college baseball at all this year. Uh, it's sad. It, it's sad. I, that's nothing else I can say about that. I wish that there was still a way to get it going, but it's not going to. Uh, junior college baseball seems to be a little bit different uh, here in the Northwest. They're going to be resuming uh, in in the middle of April. I didn't hear anything about practice schedules. And once again, that's still up in the air. Uh, they've announced it. But as we all know, things could change. I hope things don't change. I hope it does stay uh, because I would really hate for um, – my college season for covering sports this year to be done uh, because that would be pretty impactful to not even know it all in the long run. It may end up being my last season uh, covering college baseball if, if this happens, uh, just because this is really going to be the lifeblood and the, the really the groundswell of support that I've already gotten. I was going to hopefully keep growing that to be able to keep not even know open. So um, you know, the site will keep going. But whether or not I'm able to cover college baseball in the future, that's I'll do that in another video. I got that video uh, scheduled to come out actually probably uh, tomorrow after this one comes out. So but let's talk about the impact of, for players. At this point, NCAA is saying that all players will receive a year of eligibility back. So this year does not count whether they uh, played in any of the games or not. This year, wiped off the books, doesn't count. Uh, everybody gets that back. NAIA has not uh, stated anything like that as of yet, but it usually NAIA and the JUCOs uh, kind of mimic what the NCAA does. Now, once again, if the JUCOs end up playing their season and playing their championships, then that's a year of eligibility that doesn't count. And you know what? That's fine. If guys get to play, you know, even a shorter season and a chance to win. Uh, a championship or, or a title, that's a season for me. And I, I'm okay with that. That makes sense. I think they're okay with it as well. People understand this has to change. So uh, right now, once again, NCAA, all players in the spring get a year of eligibility back. Next year, they have not announced whether there's going to be a um, lift of the limit for scholarships um, because there's going to be, once again, five classes of individuals who will be on the same team. A uh, few coaches have already said they usually try to have 30 to 35 guys in the fall, and now they're going to have 45, 50. They're going to have a lot more guys. It's going to be a lot lot harder to get playing time in the fall for guys. You might see a lot of teams doing a lot more inter-squad stuff than they normally do. So uh, you got that. Uh, scholarships, once again, it hasn't been announced. Nothing's been announced scholarship-wise. Nothing's been announced when it comes to roster size. But those things have to change. It, it, it just has to because, once again, you got the seniors who should have been leaving this year who could be staying, um, and you have the incoming freshmen. That's a lot more players put on the same roster. Now, I do think one thing's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of guys, whether they're juniors this year or seniors this year, if they're eligible to go play professional baseball, eligible in the draft, they might take it. Uh, a lot more guys might take it versus what would have had this not occurred. So in the end, you might see teams being somewhat closer to what uh, normal standards are. But 
you know, you're talking about it's going to be weird this year just because the draft's going to be weird. Scouts aren't going to be out there seeing guys play, and everything's going to be different. So I'm hoping that more of this gets talked down. I mean, obviously, they're not rushing to conclusions, rushing to throw things out there. So at least I know that there's probably pretty solid discussions going on behind the scenes as to what they are going to do, the process, which is good. Uh, we all know the NCAA has not always gotten things right. And this at least seems to be a right step. Um, and I'm, you know, gives guys a chance. A lot of players won't come back for their extra year. Uh, they got to be adults and live life. And some may have families to take care of. Some just need to get jobs and just need to start paying for things. Some of them realize that you now their season's done and so is their career. And that's sad. But we'll see how that we'll see how everything plays out for incoming freshmen. This is going to be crazy. Uh, you're, you're going to be competing against uh, a whole wave of, of seniors who should have been gone. So spots that were going to clear out and open up now aren't clearing out and opening up. So guys who maybe maybe you're a, a second baseman coming in and you were looking at trying to compete for the starting job and there was a senior there and he's coming back next year, you may not get a chance to compete. So. This throws things off. It throws off junior college players trying to transfer up because, you know, it, it just does. It throws everything in, into whack. Um, but I don't know what else you can do. I don't know what else you can do right now if you're the NCAA. It just is what it is. So I'm glad they're at least officially announcing that players get a year of eligibility back. That's a great thing. And I'm, you know, patiently waiting to see what happens um, beyond this. So. Guys, I'll keep you up to date. Everything I hear, um, check out on, on Twitter. I try and keep up to date. I've been following a lot of the, the guys who find the announcements, and you know, I'll keep the information going. So, guys, I'm Josh, the 9A Know-It-All, trying to keep you updated on what's going on in college baseball. See you.